Hello and welcome to Behind the Creators, the series where I interview the people who are behind the scenes of your favorite content creators because they're not one-man teams anymore. They have editors and graphics designers and managers. They have all these people who work every single day to make sure you see your favorite videos online. So with that being said, let's interview somebody. All right, everyone, we are here with the one and only Drake Rose, a.k.a. Coders. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey there, my name is Rick Rose. I'm 22 years old. I'm a college student who's pursuing a bachelor's in science for game design engineering. I only have a few more semesters before I graduate, so I'm coming down to the very end here. All right, almost out of college. Pretty good. Yep. All right. Staying so, close. So, uh, besides uh, being a student, is do you have any other jobs? I uh, actually right now. Um, I've, I landed. I recently landed in a contract as a programmer for Jumoki Studios. Um, it's a very new studio. It isn't official yet, but we're coming closer to releasing our new game on the Roblox platform. And dependent on the success of the game, we might make it an LLC, where I or I and the contractee will found the company. So that's pretty exciting. Honestly, I'm really excited that we're getting close to release. And as soon as we release, I'll send you the game, so you can check it out for yourself. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's really, it's going, it's really fun where it is right now. That sounds pretty interesting. I'll keep an eye out for that. So, I guess we'll get down to to the questions that everyone wants to hear. Um, is making uh, Gma uh, Gma Death Run maps uh, your only other job as well? Um, wait, say that again. I say, is um making uh G -ma Gary's mod death run maps is that your other job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my other job. Yeah, for Vandal's gaming. Yep. Uh, how did you get into making Gary's mod maps, if I may ask? Um, this one goes a while back. Uh, because I've always I've always been interested in making maps and just generally creating things. Ever since I was a child, I would play games that usually have some level editor or something to create my own content. So like one of my favorite games at the time was Time Splitters Future Perfect. And this was, this game was for the GameCube. Since and this game featured a very basic level editor that allowed me to create some levels where I can have full on AI battles and play death matches with my twin brother. I spent countless hours designing and making the perfect levels that were enjoyable. This eventually extended onto other games that feature level editors like Far Cry 2, Fallout 3, Little Big Planet, Trials Fusion, Halo Forge Mode, and then finally Gary's Mod. My first levels were actually created on the original Half-Life 2 game, so Source Engine Hammer. I was just learning how to use Source Engine, so I wasn't very good at the time. I then moved on to creating levels for Left 4 Dead 2, and that's where I created some very basic maps and then filled them with full of zombies and just had fun with them. And then Gary's Mod is where I really began to really enjoy level design. I looked up tutorials and I just sharpened my skills in the engine. And I decided I was going to make some spooky maps and release them on the workshop. They weren't great, but it was a start. All right. That sounds really interesting. Very interesting beginning, starting from one game to another, especially with your brother, and then ending up making Gary's Bot maps. So how did you end up working for Vanos Gaming? All right. So um, it was during the summer of, two, of August 2016. I was making an Undertale Death Run map. And this was the first time I decided to use custom assets in a level. I spent over four days working on the map little by little. I was coming close to the end of the map's development, and I felt a sense of demotivation. Like, I felt I felt like this, what, this map wasn't going to be anything, really. Like, nobody was really going to recognize it. I remember telling my friend, who was with me at the time, and my brother, I don't think anybody will play this. It's just going to get 400 downloads and disappear in the workshop. There's no point of releasing it. My brother told me this, but I don't I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was something along the line, lines of you should finish it because you'll never you'll never know unless you put your foot forward. You're almost done, just finish it. I contemplated for a while and decided to finish the map. Once the map was finished, I released the map and I went to bed. The next morning I woke up, over a thousand downloads was on the was on the workshop page. I was honestly su very surprised and happy that a thousand people took interest in the map. Fast forward a couple days later, I get a message from one of my friends on Steam. They told me that Vanos Gaming played on my map. I was immediately in disbelief, honestly. 
I told them to send me the video link as proof. After I got the link and viewed the video, there it was, my map on Evan's channel. I searched with excitement, knowing people all around the world would be able to see my map. After a couple hours later, I got a comment on my Steam profile from basically I do work. I didn't know who he was at the time, but he wanted me to accept his friend request. I accepted his, I accepted his friend request and we began to talk. He asked me if, if I knew who he was, which I didn't. <laughs> he then mentioned if I knew Vanos Gaming. And I said, yeah. And then he felt kind of disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So he reached out to me to work with Evan because they needed someone who, make, who could make maps for them. So they offered me the position. I accepted and got into the contract. I was tasked to make a Pokemon Death Run as my very first map for them. The rest is history. Wow, it is certainly interesting. Imagine that. If your brother didn't motivate you, you probably you wouldn't be where you are today. Yeah, honestly. So, if I may, so how long does it take to develop a map for Vanos Gaming? So, all okay. So all my levels they they are created within four, a four day deadline. And I know this sounds very short. It's just it's just the way it is. We we, we need we need we want um, quantity rather than quality. We want to pump out as many maps as we can because that's what Evan wants. He wants them fast. And that's not a bad thing. It's just that's his viewership and everything. He wants them fast. So me and my brother, we work very well together so we can pump out these maps really quickly. Okay, so do so your brother helps you. Do you have anyone else who helps you with map development? Well, um, when I first, well, okay, so when I originally started, it was just me. And it was, it was some other people, but uh, I couldn't really work well with them. And the reason why is because I would, I would ask, I would usually like assign them assets and they, they wouldn't really get it back to me in time. So I would be coming close to the deadline and I would be having trouble completing the map because they weren't giving me the, the proper assets to finish it. So uh, one day I decided that I would talk to uh, one of our operations managers and see if we can get my, my brother, because he's, he's a 3D asset artist, to get on board with um, in, into a contract with Evan. And um, I did. I wind up getting him the job, and we work really well together, you know. All right, that's very interesting. So uh, what's the process you uh, go through to have a map made? Uh, well, so before the pre-production, I visualize a setting with a theme in my head. I always want to pick an interesting place that is fun for viewers, viewers to watch. When it comes to production, I always start with my maps. I always start my maps with some blueprint or design document. Now, this is important because um, in my game design degree, you always had to have some blueprint, some design document, some, we, we call it the game design Bible, something that you could follow to, to the word that makes a good game. So, so you, you, it's, like, it's, like, it's like the skeleton of a game. You can think about it like that. Um, me and Dylan, we, we would bounce trap ideas off each other until they stick. It's just you, it's usually the way we go about doing things. After we get everything planned out, we begin developing the map. I will lay out a general white box of the area. White boxing is a, is a game development term, which means to block out a level with basic geometry and to see if it feels right. Considering the levels are very linear, this is tri trivial in design, but challenging in getting the theme to feel right with the traps and environment. Dylan will model and texture all the necessary assets to make the level more enjoyable and fleshed out. I would program all the trap mechanics and insert all 3D, 2D assets, adjust lighting, and test the level. Testing can be challenging sometimes because of the unpredictable behavior of the players playing on the map. So I usually test with my brother to make sure the traps work correctly. But sometimes flaws get through, but considering we have such a short deadline, it's a given. Okay. Um, do you have any uh, favorite maps that you've made? Uh, yeah, so my favorite map that I created was the Winterfell map for Game of Thrones Death Run. The map was really detailed, and it just felt right. The setting and everything, the, the theme, the lighting, the traps, they all felt correct. Like, it felt all necessary. It felt like everything was in place. Okay. All right, so are there any uh, common themes you like to use um, in all of your maps? So not exactly, as all the maps have a unique theme. But one thing that is common in all the maps, and I mean literally every map, every map, if you go to any Death Run video, ever since I started working, 
there's always been a pitfall trap in every map. The pitfall trap is simplest by design, but the most deadliest since it blends in with the environment and it can catch you off guard. It always leaves for some great laughs when they accidentally fall into it. All right. Well, that is that is true. They always fall. They always fall for it every time. Every time. Every time. Well, I guess now we're gonna get down to the uh, the two questions that are everyone wants to know. Uh, what is the uh, reason behind none of the Gmod maps being released to the public? Okay, so I, I had to think about this one. Um, this is kind of a personal thing, honestly. I really wanted to release all the maps at the same time. So I'm going to talk with Evan to see if we can do like a CTA. His announcement of this will lure tons of players to the Gary's Mod, re reigniting the community and potentially luring new viewers to his channel. So I'm waiting for the right time to do this, but this will happen soon. Okay, so I would say. the uh, so currently it's not going to happen yet, but it's planned to happen in the future. Yes, it would happen in the future, but um, I'm going to do it when I feel like I have the comfortable amount of maps to release because I don't I don't want to short the community because I um I've played I sunk a lot of hours in Gary's mod and I want to give back to the community, and I feel like the only benef benefiting way that this is possible is releasing a lot of maps at the same time. This will also benefit Gary's mod community because it will, it will leave for more Death Run maps. And this would also benefit our viewership for Evan because it could potentially lure new viewers to his channel from Gary's mod. Well, that, that is certainly true. So I guess the uh, everyone's just going to have to wait and see for the, uh, for the maps where they be released, huh? Yeah, exactly. All right, well... Why don't we skip? Why don't we get out of these uh, tough Gmod questions and get into some simple questions? You know, some stuff to uh, have a little bit of sure. fun. Sure. So, uh, why don't let's start the first one? What's your favorite food? Okay, this one's a tough one because I like food, and we all like food. <laughs> but uh, I really love green borscht. Uh, you're probably not gonna know what that means, but my grandma and mother would make this it for dinner, and it's the best soup ever. It's it's sour and delicious. It originates from Russia, so yeah. All right. A uh, soup from your lovely babushka. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. All right, here's some more. Do you have a favorite color? Green. Just green. Yeah, I couldn't tell. <laughs> All right, well, I guess, uh, well, how about a favorite animal? Okay, so we recently got a French bulldog named Mia, and it's probably my, my most favorite animal, and she is absolutely adorable. I bet she is. You'll have to send yeah. me a picture of her. Yeah, she was a runt, so she's small, and it's just, oh my gosh, she's so cute. She has big ears. I'll send you a picture, yeah. All right, so, uh, do you happen to have a favorite, do you have any current memes or old memes that are a favorite of yours? So, memes come and go, but I would say my favorite meme is anything abrupt or cringy. So, you know abrupt memes, where oh, something, yeah. something's going casual and just just gets goes into, it just devolves into complete chaos. Oh yeah, I love those kind of games. Oh, everyone loves them. Yep. So, um, do you have any favorite games uh, besides Gary's Mod? See, I hate this question because I suck at having I suck at having a favorite game because I never sit and play one game all the time. It's it's I always put my time into all sorts of games. Right now, my my favorite game is Terraria. I mean. It's a blast to play with my friends. Plus, the new DLC just makes it a hundred times better. I'll play with my friend Joseph, Dylan, uh, Albert, and it's, it's my little brother Stefan. It's just great. All right. So, I guess I'll have to see. So, last question: uh, What do you do in your spare time? Well, on my spare time, I'm either gaming or I'm programming. It's like you know, it's it's either one. So. Um, when I'm programming, I usually like to emulate mechanics from other games or come up with, with, come up with creative mechanics that are enjoyable. I also like to analyze mechanics in different games to understand how they achieve a certain mechanic. So, like, if there's any game like Subnautica, um, it's a gungeon, Enter the Gungeon, or um, Seven Days to Die, I'll usually break open the source code of the game and read the mechanics and try to better understand how they achieve some mechanic. Because, like, honestly... 
let's be honest here. The best way to learn is to learn from the professionals, the people who are already in the industry, the people who are already making those great games. So that's where I usually, um, that's what I usually do. I, I sharpen my skills or I just relax and game. All right. So I guess that's everything. Yeah. All right. So if you guys, uh, if you got, I, I'm not, I don't even have an idea for an outro. <laughs> <laughs> I I literally had everything planned out and the outro's the one thing I didn't plan. Just didn't plan for it. <laughs> now I'm probably just gonna cut in the middle of this sentence. Thank you for watching today's episode of Behind the Creator. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next interview. Uh comment below who you think I should interview next, and there are links in the description for the person I interviewed as well as the channel they work for. This has been Behind the Creator. I'm Sickvine33, and I'm signing out.